Welcome to the Solid Oak Technologies Coverall Design and Tent Capture Demo. During this demo, I'll demonstrate how easy it is to capture design intent in the form of a flow diagram. In addition, I'll demonstrate how to generate both the assertions and path covers required for assertion-based verification and the RTL module from a single source diagram. We start by creating a flow diagram in the Microsoft Visio environment. We're going to open a blank diagram. And the reason that we use a blank diagram is Visio can add some unwanted properties to the other diagram types. I prefer to operate in the landscape with the landscape diagram, so I'm going to switch to that now. In order to create the Visio diagram, we have to um, add some shapes. And the shapes that we use for coverall are very specific to the tool. And there are three stencil libraries that ship with the tool. The first is the coverall lib. Uh, the second is the flowchart to assert and the last being the timing diagram to assert. Today we're going to generate a flow diagram, so we're going to use the flow chart to assert. I'll open that template now. You can see the masters that come with that. So the first master that you want to place on a coverall diagram is the title master. And today we're going to be creating a design, and we want to generate system barrel log assertions from that, so I'm going to give it this particular drawing, the system barrel log assertion file type. Um, this data is going to be output into a file that I'm going to name dummy.1 and then when we go back later and create the RTL file we're going to create that in a file called dummy. So I have my, my main title block now. So let's discuss the, the logic that I'm going to place on this diagram and, and process with coverall. So the, the design for today is a 16-bit counter and the unique features of this counter would be that it has an enable, it has an up and a down facility, and um, it's going to be clocked by a signal named clock and an asynchronous reset. So what we need to do first is to uh, place a terminator block, and in the terminator block we put items where we define um, things like clocks and resets. So here I'm going to use the clock keyword and create a clock on the positive edge a signal called CLK. In addition, I want an asynchronous reset for this particular design, so I'm going to use the async reset keyword, and I'm going to assign that to a neg edge signal reset. Okay. So now I have my terminator block, and now I need to define the state of the circuit when it comes out of reset. So I do that by placing a process block and connecting that process block with a dynamic connector to the terminator block. So the output of this particular design is going to be a counter signal named count. I have to define the bit width since it's a 16-bit counter. I will define it as 50 to 0. And then I need to set its reset value. In this case, I'm going to set its reset value to 0. Now I have um, some decisions to make based on my input. As I said earlier, we have three inputs, uh, enable, up, and down. So I'm going to place some decision blocks here, and I'm going to connect the first decision block to my reset block, and I'm going to put the enable signal in here. So out of the enable um, condition, I need to have a state change. And for this particular design, if the counter is not enabled, then I want the count to remain and not change. So I'm going to indicate that by putting an equation in this process that says count remains in count. And I need to indicate that that is when the enable signal is not active. So now when the enable signal is active, I need to decide what I'm going to do there. And for this particular design, I'm giving up um, priority over down. So I'm going to look at the up signal next and add a process block for that state change. And in this case, when the up signal is active, I want it to increment. So I'm going to indicate that. Here. And so I do the count equals count plus one, uh, one tick B1. In this case, you've noticed I didn't say count equals count plus one. I used one tick B1. That's because some formal tools don't like the uh, constants without size designation. So now I need to decide what to do when up is not active. Uh, in this case, I need to add a yes to show that it's active. And here I'll add a no to show that that is inactive. And in this case, I'm going to look at the signal down, and then 
I need to have a state change based on the down signal. Connect that to the process block. Positive change. And now I'm going to add a decrementer. Okay, uh, there's one last state I have to consider, and that's when neither up or down is active. The counter is enabled, so I'm going to add that state here. And for my design, I want the count to remain in its current state. And then the gain X when the down is not active. Okay, so the basic um, flow is here. Um, coverall requires a closed path uh, design, so I'm going to add, add an aggravator, an aggr aggregator here. And... Um, the aggregator is going to connect back to the uh, reset block. I'm going to hit F1. And then I'm going to add another aggregator here at the bottom of the drawing. Hook that aggregator to all of my processes to close the loop. And so I'll add in the connector to each of these. And I'm going to label this as 1 so that this point in the diagram is the same as this point. two process blocks and I will clean up the signal routing here and we have our we have our drawing now swap these two back okay and there we have our nice clean Okay, so now we can take this diagram into coverall and process it to create the assertions and path covers uh, that represent this logic. So we're going to bring up coverall. Coverall is an add-in, so we can go up here and click on the add-in. And it all runs out of a shell. So we run coverall, and here's the code. Um, as you can see here, um, in this, for the beginning of this demo, I'm not going to create um, any of these secondary outputs, the RTL. Bind modules, test bench, and the formal scripts. Um, instead, I'm just going to generate the assertions here, and, and I've told the tool to generate assertion sequences and cover paths that may exist in this particular diagram. Two things to note here is there's a log file requirement, and here I've um, indicated that I want my log file to go into a, a test count a directory on the C drive, and I've also um, told Coverall to output all data to that same directory. And as you can see, this little graphic right here, assertion outputs will go into an assertion directory under this output directory. RTL will go into an RTL directory, verification files in the verif directory, and formal scripts in the formal directory. So now we're ready to run this particular design, and we'll go down here and click the Run button. And you see we have an error on our diagram. Let's go see what that is. The error tab comes up and says, oh, we forgot to rename our Visio page. So Visio requires all pages to be lowercase, underscore, and um, numerics in, in any order that you want. So I'll go back and rename that and rerun coverall. Okay, so coverall has come up and, and given us this pop-up saying, hey, you're about to overwrite some files because we've run this before. So I'm going to tell it to overwrite everything. And here you see it's done. So it's, it outputs some statistics here. And the statistic output shows you that you're drawing statistics, how many shapes, how many processes, decisions, connectors, and terminators were on your drawing. Um, then there's some graph statistics, um, some graphing technology to generate the assertions, and it's letting you know how large that um, graph was. And then it tells you what assertions it created. So in this case, it generated one asynchronous reset assertion, four assertions, and four path covers. And here you see the assertion file, and we can look through there and see that there are one, two, three, four assertions here. And then the fifth assertion in the file here is a reset assertion. And finally, it generated four path covers. And one of the nice features of Coverall is you can double-click on this particular assertion and say, find that diagram object, and Coverall will show you um, which uh, process block is creating those assertions. Um, you can grab this second one here and say the same thing again, find that diagram object, and you can see the cover all grabbed uh, a different process block. And finally, for the flows, um, the, the paths, and the cover properties generated by paths, you can grab these uh, names and tell it to find that diagram object, and then cover all will show you all of the elements in that particular path. And as you can see, this one goes straight down the, straight down the diagram. 
Okay, so um, we've generated um, the assertions and, and everything looked good. Now maybe we want to go back and create an, an, uh, an RTL module out of this. So in order to do that, we have to add another page. And we're going to name this one dummy underscore IO. And basically here we're going to define the IO for this module so that um, Coverall knows exactly how to generate the module for us. And we have to add two two blocks, a number of blocks on here. Um, and here's our title block. And in this case, we're not generating assertions. We're generating a block diagram. So we use the, the BD keyword. And then we add, um, again here, following our use of the name dummy, we're going to add dummy here as the name of the RTL file and, and this particular file name. And we'll go ahead and change this module to dummy. OK, now we need to add some IO. Oh, we go pick up the input masters. Here. We're going to have five inputs to this particular design. We define, add those onto the page, and in addition, we're going to have one output signal. So we'll add that one. And the key here, you, you just need to make sure the signal names touch the, the module for uh, cover all the processing. So we have a clock signal, we have a reset signal, we have an enable signal, we have an up signal. And we have a down signal. In addition, we have our output, which is count. And here we have to define the bit width. So Coverall knows what that is. And basically, we have our top level module. And now we can go back to Coverall and process this again. And this time, we're going to tell it to generate the RTL, a bind module for our assertions, a test bench template, and some formal scripts. We're going to generate our RTL in System Verilog. You can pick either Verilog or System Verilog. We're going to create a simple test bench template in System Verilog, and we'll output scripts for a formal in the, in the mentor um, zero into. So we go ahead and run that, and once again, it tells us we're about to overwrite. Now it gives us another pop-up saying you're about to overwrite your RTL test bench and formal files. So we go ahead and do that, and you can see it created five tabs now. The first tab is um, the same uh, statistics file. The second tab is the same assertion file. Now we've created an RTL file, and here you can see it's an RTL file with the, with the six, the five inputs and the one output. And then here is our actual logic uh, that was generated by that flow diagram, and it's in an always flip-flop with a positive clock and a count set. And in addition to that, it created a test bench template. Here you can see it's got our inputs and outputs. It's instantiated the dummy as uh, U0. Uh, this is our block dummy that we just created. It's instantiated a bind. Uh, of the VA dummy module to our dummy module so that we can get our assertions bound and assign that to E1. And then it has a simple clock generator and, 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 and reset initialization block. And then as you see here with the with the green characters here, um, there's a warning here that the file is auto-generated by Coverall. Do not modify above this line because Coverall is going to generate this each time. You can modify anything from line 42 on down. Just remember to create that module. And then finally there's a a bind module that's created, and this bind module essentially just lists the assertion files that were created. Um, the other thing you'll see down here on the there's a summary of all the things that um, Coverall did to generate these diagrams. Uh, some information was generated, the number of pages, title blocks, and some other useful information. You can see there were no warning or, or errors. Okay. Um, that's basically the uh, the entire generation process for Coverall. And so now you have your assertions, you have your RTL, and you can go um, and rewrite some of this test bench to do to test that module, and uh, basically have your entire design right here in the web. So thanks for watching the demo.